Hello, this is John from Clocky Repairs Merseyside. I just thought I'd do a couple of short videos on this um, Young Gans O'Clock Movement Westminster Chime. Uh, quite a, a well made movement, spring driven, as you can see. Uh, I just thought I'd go through a few things how, how I'd attempt to sort this out. I mean, obviously, really, the clock works absolutely fine. Uh, it just really needs a good service. It probably hasn't been serviced for many, many years. I think it's probably dated uh, early nine, early twentieth century. Uh, I would think more than likely it's actually had everything done. So it's a lot of casework done to it, uh, especially the, the the sort of tea caddy type top on it. That's had a lot of work done on it. Um, the movement itself it just looks pretty. It's just pretty dirty and. You know, it needs uh, it needs a good service. It's got a lot of um, gunk. The oil's dried up in the pinion holes, as we can see. I mean, so when we get it to bits, it's actually a B08 Youngens B08, uh, which we can see down there. Uh, I'm actually working at the minute with this with my phone without without the the bench light because it causes a little bit of interference on it. So uh, I hope it's not going to be too bad, but I'll try and make the video as best I can. Okay, first things first, obviously, when you're going to work on any clock movements, obviously, except if it's weight driven, you just take your weights off. But the first thing you've got to do is you've got to let the main springs down. Now, pretty simple. We have a, a, a key that does that. That's pretty much down that one. Go to the next one, let it down, let's just let it slip through your fingers. And this one a bit more difficult, I would imagine. Let it slip through my fingers nice and carefully. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do, obviously, release power. Um, you know, let's, if, you, if you work on a clock and you've left power in the, um, in the springs, you'll, you'll, you'll certainly find out pretty quickly. As soon as you split the plates, you'll find out that you've left and then you'll probably do quite some damage to some of the, the wheels and pinions and things like that. And you probably just ruin the clock, to be fair. So uh, that's, that's one thing that you want to make sure you do every single time is make sure them you know do that check that twice check that twice make sure you've done it check that twice on all three main springs no power at all can be there um okay now this type of clock what we would do now with this type of clock and um, which i've already actually done is i take a lot of photographs of the clock um probably you know about 10 photographs and i take them with a camera a small camera and i put them on an sd card um, and then what i can actually do then is put them into my computer and actually print them off quite large and big so that i can actually see uh, what needs to be done needs to be put together also i always set the clocks at about 12 o'clock at midday as you can see where that's went into that divot there it's 12 o'clock i set the clock at 12 o'clock and I, 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 I take notes i look at where things are like obviously there's a stop pin here um, and I look where all these things are I have a good look over the clock I don't just crash in and you know think I'm going to get it right you know spend a bit of time looking at the clock getting everything right take your time take your time that's the main thing to do take your time if you want to be successful at this take your time and once I'm happy with all that I mean also on the back if you look here um, there's a mark there, which we didn't do, but there's a mark there. Someone's put like a, a divot in the hole and it lines up with this screw, centre screw. And also there's a couple of little marks on, um, you know, your chiming, your chiming side of your, of, of your clock, your chime wheels, your positions of the chiming wheel. And that's OK. Um, just let's, you know, I'm going to stick with them. I've took photographs of them. Um, so, you know, we pretty much know where they are. 
so that's it now i'm gonna obviously take the front plate off on this clock and i'm gonna work from there i'm gonna work from there so what i would do now is i would put we have these um movement stands okay just move that out the way we have these movement stands you can get them a lot taller than that you can actually get them um you know to, to to do wall clocks as well you can put them on the wall you have like a little hanger and they go on the wall they're quite handy for wall clocks uh they work really well uh we have probably you know four or five sets of each to be honest with you sometimes the amount of work we've got um we have four or five sets of each but yeah you can actually get them a bit taller as well uh obviously if you've got a bit you see possibly with this it's going to have to be the taller ones because you can't hang them because of the hammers and things i mean this hammer might bend back slightly um but i'm not sure whether these will be be long enough but i'll put them on but anyway you position them on the movement like that now you don't have to massively over tighten them but you need them to be you know okay now if they keep slipping off you might be better off putting you know a little piece of card underneath and, and and tighten them up but you don't want to be that you don't want to be marking the movements up you know you don't really want to be doing that no matter what type of clock it is you don't want to be marking the movements up you know you've got to take good care of everything you know if someone's uh granny's or something sentimental value you don't you don't want to be marking it all up you what you want it to be you know you want it to stay in good shape now they would go like that Okay, so so now your movement is off the just about off the off the off the bench here, the desk, uh, and so what I would do now again is I would take a photograph of this as is, check my mainsprings are wound down again, make sure just give the the, the, the clips a little you know push just to see make just make sure can't stress that enough. I've seen I've seen it so many times, you know people haven't you know wound something down and and they've then took the movements of pieces and next minute the movements being all over the workshop and uh, you know teeth are, are sheared off and all manner of problems and it? it's, it's it's just a real problem isn't it which you don't need now the next thing obviously we're going to look at the clock and we're going to say right how are we going to attempt to do this now obviously we're going to have to take everything off this front plate here and then we're going to undo these four nuts and we're going to pop pop the movements off then we're going to take some more pictures again it's still set at 12 o'clock so you know that that's that's okay right so just to have a little look at the movement round now so yeah so i think we'll start with our we'll start from the bottom and we go up okay so we'll take our better screwdriver than that um, Start off with your mainsprings. Reason being, obviously, is as you, as you can see, I'm stressing this mainspring thing quite a lot uh, because it's 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 one of the most important things to do is uh, make sure that them mainsprings are wound down. So I'm going to start off with my mainsprings. So on this particular clock. Very, very stiff that. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to pop off camera in a second while I do that. I need to get a, a good grip of it. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, just back again. Right, they, they were very tight then. Right. So we're going to start off the mainsprings. Now I have one of these uh, trays. Well, I have quite a lot of them actually. But what what I tend to do is I put the number. We, we number everything. Can I put the numbers of what's on the clock movements in the case? And I'm, we number everything with little yellow labels, and everything's numbered now, and everything stays together. Even pendulums, keys, everything. So what I would do now is I would dismantle all these, and everything to do with mainspring. Everything to do with the mainspring is going to go in one one little uh, pocket should we say and that just keeps things organized this is really really you know it's got to be it's it's a very important very important 
because obviously you know there's a there's you know there's not the lad who works for me Stephen so you know it's good for him to know not to be chasing things round so this is what we'd be doing I'm just going to get this front section off uh, and then I'm going to stop there and uh, but this this is just a general procedure of what we do. Uh, I just thought it might be helpful to some of us out there who may be thinking of getting into clock making or clock repairs. Um, I'm sure it's old hat to, to, to many of us. But, uh, I think all these videos help a lot. Let's keep my hand out the way. Yeah, so I'm just taking obviously click springs off and you know now often with another tight screw oh yeah now you've got to try not to slip when you're taking these screws out because you don't want to be damaging the screws do you right so Okay, really, really handy, these little containers. Okay, so there is everything off that spring section there. So your three your three main springs now are pretty clear. Uh, you can't do no damage, totally unwound, that's it. Now, often with a lot of clocks, um, you find that the actual winding arbors sometimes come out you know, if you pull on them, they'll actually slip out and you can actually take the springs out and work that way with them, really, if you don't want to really, you know, really take the clock to pieces. But, you know, obviously, really, a clock that's of this age and it probably hasn't been serviced for quite a long time, really, it should be coming to pieces and it should be getting serviced properly. Um, you know, everything to do with, you know, you've got to polish your pinions, uh, you you know you've got to peg your holes out. You've got to make sure there's no bushing work needs doing. You know you've got to do them things. You need to spend the time on that. You know I know we see a lot of things. Uh, you know the movements all polished and cleaned and all looking absolutely lovely and bright and all that. I mean you know that's 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 not the main thing, is it? I mean the main thing is is that the other things are done. Like you know your holes are pegged out, your pinions are polished. You know you you, you know you've got no bushing work. Everything's you know relatively running smoothly and and nice i mean you know getting the clock plate shiny is 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 the last of the you know the concern really in my opinion as i say but i don't believe obviously a very very shiny clock i mean as long as all the other things if, if the other things are done like your pinions are polished all your bushing works dead right and everything else the clock's going to work properly no problem at all i mean when i see a clock and the movement's all bright and shiny i don't necessarily think oh this is this this is de definitely a good clock. I mean, how many times have you know? In my time, I've seen a uh, clock plate, especially French round type movements, you know, drum type movements, and you know they've had them on the buffing wheel. You know they've buffed the the, the plates up on a buffing wheel. I mean, you know, and and, and took half of the um, you know the the name away, sort of Jappy Ferreira or something like that. The, you know, half of that's missing. I mean, that's 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 clock making for you, isn't it? I wouldn't have thought so, but anyway. But so that's where we're at with that. So now we're moving up, up the movement now, and we're on our. Um, see, could I possibly get a little bit further in here so you can actually see what I'm doing? Oh, excuse me a minute. As I say, I'm not. I'm no David Bailey with my camera. Making a mess of this. Right, okay, so we look at our front section of the clock now. Here. Um, as you can see now, you've got your, 
your cannon and pinion, uh, you've got your snail, um, you've got your you know your striking me mechanisms going to your rack and 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 you know your gathering pallet up here. Pay nice attention to that. Don't damage it, break it, whatever you know. Um, yeah, so I'll uh, get on with that. Right. Again, very, very tight screws. Um, you know what? I'm going to stop the video there a second. I'm going to try and mount this on a better tripod so you can see it from the top. Okay, this is John from Clock Repairs. Where's his dad? I'm back again. I'm just going to try and get you a better picture on that. Uh, right, I don't know whether that's any better. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Right, anyway, so where were we? Okay, so we started from the bottom, where the mainsprings are, we've wound them all down, and now we're moving up to the center section of the clock, uh, which is your cannon and pinion, um, or your striking mechanism, you know, your rack and snail, uh, and that type of thing. So, again, undo screws, everything seems pretty tight on this clock. Uh, so make sure you've got good screwdrivers and always be very very cautious don't don't sort of crash in um trying to you know get things and you know just you know if something's a bit if something's a bit tight uh don't necessarily start you know over pulling things or whatever you're gonna do because you know don't 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 go go crazy now to me that looks like it's um it's pinned in that looks like it's pinned in so i'm gonna try and find a couple of levers just to see can i get underneath that um, and, and, and go from there or see could we get underneath it with a pair of tweezers maybe now you've got to remember you've got a pinion there off a you know off your off one of your strike wheels so you know really Bit of, a, bit of a strange way of doing this but mm, I don't know I'm going to pop off camera in a second because I don't want to do any damage just give us a second okay back again right if you look at that it's got a pin obviously it's pinned in uh, it was into the movements it was quite tight so that's now out that was what that was one of our sections there okay our centre wheel off can go there this little wheel here I can go there coming apart quite easily now I can go there right now we've got a few other bits and pieces now so obviously now these are all they've got taper pins in them so you take the taper pins out. Again, might have to just lever things off slightly. Again, always be careful. Don't go mad. Don't go mad at all. Again, note where you are. Also, good idea as you're going through is take take some photographs. Take some photographs. Yeah. Keep going, take some photographs. 
I'll have to get a better camera system set up. I'm, uh, it's really frustrating. I'm just trying to get this pin out. It seems to be being a bit of a bugger. Anyway, there it goes. That's out. Everything seems to be, well, not everything, but there's a few things. So just, just leave them up nicely. If you find that something is, is, is not coming up quite easy as well, I mean, maybe what you're better doing is uh, maybe, you know, putting a drop of oil on, just let it soak in, see what it's going to do. Don't forget, you, you know, you're cleaning, the, you're going to be cleaning the clock, so it, it hardly matters if there's going to be a little bit of oil. It's going to be coming off. Um, also here we've got our what's our gathering palette uh, now you need to be quite careful here because if you you know you, you need if when you leave them off you need them to leave it off like equally and um, you don't need them to you know be be coming off sort of trying to put it one side because you're going to bend the pinion that's one thing or you could even snap it again major problem um I'm trying to zoom in on this camera but doesn't seem to want to let me do that anyway right i have these uh, levers i think we've seen these before uh, i got these from ebay i think they come from china the stainless steel and, and they're quite they, they, they seem just they're very handy they're very handy you know for getting cannons off and you know anything that you've got to leave it off equally i mean you know you can go straight underneath you know and push and you know and it, it does it takes things off easily you see that's that's really nice where that's the way that's come off you see there's your your gathering palette and it's come off come off really nice no damage at all everything's fine and that pops in our tray um, we have another lever over here. Now, again, you know, you've got to try and get it off equally. So, the other thing which is good about these is you can slide them underneath each other. And, you know, pull. And that's off, you see. Lovely. Nice and easy. The right tools to do the job. And that's off. Okay, again, as you're going through, make notes in your mind of, of the way things are. Uh, and as I say, always take them photographs. Um, this actually looks like it's a retaining spring and it's actually keeping the arbor on as well. So let's see what our situation is with that. So that seems a bit Yeah, I think what they've done there. just going to bend this up slightly and I'm going to just tap it and see does it actually start moving outwards no no not at all Not at all, but that's a bit of a... A bit of a hiccup, that one. Uh, well, I just have to completely work something out and renew that. 
Right, just stop. We're going to stop a second again. Okay, back again. Right, what he had to do is he had to cut that off and so that I left a little piece there and then popped it out. So obviously that's something we're going to have to make again uh, to, to make it right again. So that's that off. Okay, now we're getting to the point now where we're pretty um, clear and we can, you know, pop the front end off, pop, pop the plate off. Uh, I think this one last piece here. Okay. That's that pin off. It's got a spring on it, nice and careful. You don't want to be bending it. Right. Now, that seems pretty much it to me now. Um. Right, now on this we have screws, one, two, three, four, five, six screws in total. And they're all going to pillars. So, you know, I'll just get a nut driver and I'll uh, start taking that off and let you have a look at it. Okay, you've just got one of these cheap old type nut drivers, not as special, does the job. Right. Undo the nuts. I mean, you know, you can do it with pliers and stuff like that, but you know what? Obviously better to do it with this because obviously it doesn't slip and, you know, so uh, we, we think it's a must really. Um, so we're pretty much putting everything off the front end in one section. Now, a clock of this age would probably be okay to go in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, you know, it's pretty early. I think I think anything sort of 1900 onwards, I think, would be okay in an ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, there's a lot of debate over the ultrasonic cleaner. You know, it can damage the, um, you know, it can cause, you know, cause of the way brass was formed years ago and it's cast and one thing and another. It, it, there's little cracks in it. And I think, you know, there is, you know, there is good evidence to suggest that, you know, there is, there is a, a chance that things will crack again. Um, so yeah, but I, as I say, something of this age, I think it will be an ultrasonic cleaning situation. So have a little look, see where you are with everything. And pop your plates off again. Maybe give it a little bit of a hand. I think something's stopping us here. Right, okay. So, on this, we've got our levers, which will adjust your speed, your, your time. One will obviously lift the pendulum up and down, and the other one probably turns the chiming off. So, we've got them two there. So, they need um, popping off. So, again, they're the, the using taper pins. So we're just going to pop the So there you go on that one. That's come off. That's the right. There's your front plate, and that's ready to take off. So just nice and carefully, just tease it away from its movement parts and set it aside. 
Okay, now there's your trainer wheels. Obviously, you've got your chine train, time train, strike train. So you've got three tr trains of wheels. Now, what we what we probably do uh, before we're gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm gonna take some photographs of this now, as is taking particular notes of where these pins are. Okay. Take, take particular notes of them. Take, take nice close in photographs of that. Uh, make sure that you know you're gonna get that right. You want it, they want the movement to go back like this, and then you know you can work from there. So what we would probably do, as I was about to say, is we would string these. So so that train there would get strung in one. That would get strung in another. That would get strung in another. In other words, we'd like a cable tie or something, you know, something to put them together, a bit of wire, whatever. Put them together, and then they can go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, that's the way we do it. As I've said to you a thousand times before, I'm not. I don't believe I'm the best, uh, but this is what works for us, and I've been in business long enough to know. You know, it's not bad. So again, as I say to you, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a couple of photographs, paying particular attention. to where the wheels are. Okay, right. <coughs> so as I was saying, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a couple of cable ties. Yeah, sorry about my shady camera work, but I think it's more important about what we're doing with clocks. Right, so obviously your main spring barrels, let's just have a look at them. I mean, I'm going to pop these springs out. I'm going to pop these springs out and uh, have a look at them, check them out. Uh, and if they're no good, I'll do a separate video on taking them out of there. Um, if, they're, if, if they're no good, you know, the springs, we'll, we'll, we'll change them. Um, you know, quite often, to be honest with you, we, we change them anyway. Um, you know, the way we see it, it's been inside this cylinder probably for nearly 100 years. So, you know, it'll be sort of pretty, could be set by now, um, or it's on its way there, so we probably would change them. Um, other things you want to watch what you're doing is you need to mark your cylinders up. Um, so what we probably do, we, we, we mark the lids and we mark the um, the barrel as well so that everything goes back together as it should do. So on saying that, so what we do is we'd mark this one T1, T2 and T3. So train one, train two and train three. That's how we do it. So... We just get this and we'd mark it as neat as we could and not big massive letters. T1. Just using a scribe. Okay, as you can see, don't know whether you can see it by the way, we've just marked it up. T1. And T1 there, set it aside, okay? T2. Here we go again. T2. T2. T3.
Okay. T3, T3. Right, so they're set aside. Right, now, obviously now you've got, if you, you can see it more clearly now. Yeah, I'll pull this down a bit for us, eh? Let's see what we can do. I'll get this camera situation right at some point. Right, we have our, have a little French clock strike in there. As you can see, we have our time train. Time train at the center, strike train, and chime train. Now we will string them together just like this. So we will string them together just like that okay so that that's one train so the old plan is to as you're stripping the clock down is do it in a methodical way and in a good way so that everything's going to go together you're not second guessing everything because the big problem with the with clocks is is that if you put it together and it's wrong You've got to take it to pieces again to do the work it, it it just doesn't make any sense so you're better at this point in time you're better taking your time getting it as right as you can don't be distracted just follow procedure and and do it that way and and uh, you know you shouldn't have many many pro i mean don't get me wrong we all get problems but you know you, you're trying to eliminate that so that's one train to, to, that's the time train so now your chime train Obviously, there's something stuck on the back of that. That's the fly there on that one. Right, so what I'll do first is I'll pop our strike train out. Now, obviously, you've got your fly on this this train. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll put that together. You can tell it's obviously the strike train because you've got your, you know, your pinwheeling or your, your, you know, you, you know that they, that operates your hammer, you know, goes past your hammer. I'm sure you all know. I hope you don't think I'm trying to be patronising, telling you what what it is. I mean, but I'm I'm just trying to, you know, be as sensible as I can uh, in case there's people who are just starting off, and you know, I want to sort of give them a bit of an insight. I mean, there's many, many good videos, but I sometimes think they're a bit, you know, they're, they're a bit difficult. But anyway, so this fly, I'm just going to put that in another thing separately, and we'll clean that separately. Now, obviously, there's, there, there's your, your clock movement pretty much stripped down. It doesn't take long. Now, obviously, this wheel is part of, obviously, your chime train, and it doesn't come off because it's connected to this wheel here right so what we're going to do is we're going to pop it off pop this screw out every single screw is tight on this clock Now what I'd do to be honest is I, I I'd probably um you know keep 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 that together. 
in the, in the, in the, in the trunk. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's 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 been put on. It's been put on with a um, a taper pin. So we're just gonna. Seems a bit tight, I think this <coughs> pushed in the way. I'm not going off camera again, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it. It's giving me a bit of a, a problem there. Uh, right, where's my loop? Have all these things that there they are there. So we've got to try and get um, Okay, got that out like extracting seat. So that's that pin out there. And this is onto this back wheel. Now remember at the beginning we had them wheels marked up. You see they were marked up with some some marks on them, so remember that. Now again quite stiff. So what I'm gonna attempt to do on this particular one. Is I'm gonna attempt to twist it without marking the movements if possible. And there you go. That's that off. Um, you know. We have another wheel there right so what we have now is we have our strike our, our time train our strike train and our chime train all strung together ready to be cleaned now Again, just looking at your clock again. Um, we've got that's obviously your palette. Now, the thing to do with your palette is check it out, make sure it doesn't need replacing or refacing or whatever. I always look, look at them through a loop, and that looks absolutely fine. A very little. Very little mark on that, really. Very little at all. So that 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 will clean up pretty nice. Also, what I what I do as well is I look at all the pinions through a loop as well. I mean, they look okay. Um, I give them a, I give them a bit of a check before they go into a into the th into the ultrasonic cleaner, but they they seem okay. They seem okay. I mean, just from an outset looking, but you know, we need to check them out a lot further. So, just to recap, we still got our back end to do, right? So There you have it. So that's pretty much your clock stripped down. 
right you've got obviously your three time chains string together you've got your three main springs you've marked your main springs up t1 t2 t3 um all your components are in this little tray it's a divider tray and everything's you know pretty pretty separate so that you know it all goes together as it should do when it's all cleaned up and, and done um your plates again you can pretty much see there's a there's a lot of gunk on them i mean obviously you're going to go through this with you with, with your loop uh, and you're gonna now i mean if you were going to do any any bushing work i mean you know it, i mean sometimes i'll i'll give the clock a good clean first and uh, the ultrasonic clean first and then i'll i'll check all the all the uh the the, the you know the the pinion holes out then because you know because everything's clean and i'm not getting any error or whatever then I, if necessary i'll bush them but on first glance of this this clock it doesn't look to be any i know just it's had a, a bit of bushing work there done there before in its time up the top of here as well up this top of here as well so yeah obviously it has had some service um but it looks okay up to now uh, we have our back end now now your back end is not really overly complicated uh, you've got your pin battle and you've got your hammers really and that's really it you've got this fly i'm just going to pop out of this hole and that can go with the other fly or maybe not anyway it's it's in a tray separately so you've got you know you you your pin battle and that's secured that's secured with it with a um, again a taper pin so we can tell this clock's pretty early because everything's secured with a taper pin so I'll take my stands off as I say no marks at all very important make sure you know you know it, it, it's it's not a building job it's a it's with, with clock makers uh, you know keep it keep it easy uh, finesse is what we need yeah so that's that's pretty pretty much where it is that's pretty much where it is um yeah so i think i think the next video I, I mean i don't know whether i mean that's just a general idea of of uh you know stripping the clock down and how you start it and one thing you know and going from there i mean I probably wouldn't have the time really to put it all to. I mean, I'll show you it all back together when it's clean and done and stuff like that. And I may do do uh, one on the springs, you know, the the main springs. Uh, just show you how they come out the barrel. Uh, that might be a good little video. Anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. Just checking off. Uh, as I say, sorry about my camera work, but I, I just decided, you know, an hour ago to do a little a little video while I had a bit of a chance. Uh, so hope that you'd enjoy it anyway if you'd like to please subscribe leave me a like uh, and check our site that we've got a new website opening coming up soon called at clock repairs merseyside.co.uk so uh, we're moving on a little bit from there anyway have a good day thanks